Hey guys, it's Ellen. I have no long time, no see. I haven't posted a video in a while. I bet you probably have noticed. And um, the reason for that is that I have not really been reading that much. And it's really terrible. I don't like it. Um, I'm just in a really bad reading slump. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit out of my slump, but for the month of October, it was really bad. <laughs> so instead of posting a video of what I read in October, which was literally one book, I read one book and it was like a middle grade children's book. <laughs> Instead of posting that video and just talking about my failures, I decided I'm gonna do a October and November wrap up all together and hopefully by then I will have done a little bit more reading. But I did wanna film a video for you guys and one that I have kind of haven't done in a while is a book haul, which seems a little bit silly at this point because I haven't been reading very much, but I have been buying books. Um, but most of the books I've got um, here with me are either I bought them for a dollar at a book sale or um, I got them as um, ARCs at my job, which I work at a bookstore is one of my jobs. Um, and so I'm just gonna jump right into the books that I got in both the months of September as well as October. The first book that I wanna talk about is a book that I've actually been anticipating for a really long time. Um, and it came out sort of recently and I decided to pick it up. I bought it full price, which I never do, um, but I bought it and it's kind of bringing me out of my reading slump actually. And this is Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. Um, the thing I th that really intrigued me about this book, it's about a girl who has schizophrenia. One of the things she does on a daily basis is tries to figure out which things in her life are real and which are things that are in her mind, which is, to me, it's crazy. I can't imagine living a life like that, but it's also really fascinating, and I want to be able to understand a perspective of a person who is going through this, because it's a real thing, and people do deal with this. Um, and so I'm really hoping that the author um, has a good perspective on this and really you know, gets the facts right and also can come up with a good story. I'm only about, how far? I'm not far at all. At all. Um, I'm 39 pages in, but so far I really like the main character. Um, she's really interesting and um, yeah, I just like it so far. It's an interesting premise. So I'm reading this one and it's getting out of, out of my reading slump. So hopefully that'll, that'll keep up. <laughs> okay, next I'm going to talk about some books that I got for really cheap. I think Every single one of these was just one dollar, um, and I got them at book sales at libraries um, in the area around me. Um, the first one that I picked up is Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? This one and Other Concerns. This one is by Mindy Kaling. I bet most of you have already heard about this book. She actually has a new book out now. Um, I think it's called Why Not Me? Um, and that one is another autobiography of hers, but this is her first autobiography, which I actually, I listened to it um, about the first half of it, and then I had to return it to the library, and I never ended up picking up the other half of it and finishing it up. And I think that um, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks um, that are autobiographies because I think it's interesting when the author narrates that. Um, and this one in particular, it didn't. I didn't love it as much. I didn't love her narration of it. But I think maybe it'll translate better into text. And so, um, I mean, this was low risk. It was a dollar. And so I figured I'm going to probably, you know, at some point try it and read it from the beginning and see if I like it better in this form. The next book that I have here is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl and I was really excited to find this one for really cheap because I've actually been wanting to pick it up. I've put it into my basket um, at Barnes & Noble multiple times online and never bought it but um, the movie is out and I really want to see it. It just seems like a really interesting premise. It's about this, I think it's about this boy who um, is sort of forced to befriend this girl who has a terminal illness. I think it's sort of about how they get through high school and their friendship and um, growing and changing um, in that time period of their life, which sounds really interesting to me and it's supposed to be kind of funny, so I like that. Next here I have The God of Small Things and this is by, oh my, Arun Hadi Roy. I really am sorry if I didn't say that correctly. Um, and I don't know what this book is about at all, but I have seen it a lot of different places. Um, my cousin was reading it and said it was really good. Um, I believe I saw it on Ashley's channel, who is Climb the Stacks. Um, I'll link her channel right down below. Um, she's awesome. You should definitely go check her out. But this, uh, I believe that she really liked this book. Um, I saw it. It was a dollar. I picked it up. So hopefully I'll give it a try in the near future. This one was a little bit of a silly purchase, but it was a dollar, and this is one of my absolute favorite books of all time, and so I picked up another copy of it. And it's Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. I hope I said that right. Um, this book is so good. If you haven't read it, just just go read it. It's, it's um, historical fiction. 
I don't even know what else to say about it. I read it when I was younger and it just for something about this book it just has stuck with me forever and I just love the atmospheric tone of it. Um, everything about it was really really interesting so definitely go read it. I have two copies now which I'm really excited about. This is another little bit of a naughty purchase because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but I picked up another Joyce Carol Oates book and this one is called Maria. Um, I have three other books by, wait, maybe four now. I think I have four books by Joyce Carol Oates. No, this is, this is my fourth book by Joyce Carol Oates and I still haven't read anything by her. I don't want to talk about it. I just don't. Okay, next is a book, another book recommended by Ashley at Climb the Stacks and this one is Gilead by Mary Lynn Robinson. Don't know anything about this one, but she um, talked about how this one was recommended to her a lot, um, and then she finally read it, and it lived up to the hype, and she loved it, so I want to give it a try, because she liked it, and I tend to like a lot of the things that she likes as well, so this was a dollar. I picked it up. I'm going to read it. This next book is Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, this one, <laughs> the cover is so scary. <laughs> I like can't even look at it in the viewfinder, because it's it just freaks me out. Um, but I picked it up around Halloween time. I feared I wouldn't probably get around to it because I was already thick into my reading slump. But it just seemed like a good thing to have. Ch Chuck Palahniuk is um, an author that a lot of people love. I have his book Fight Club somewhere over here. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, right there. And also haven't read that, but oh, that's backwards. And <laughs> I figured it'd be good to have another one of his books on hand if I um, you know, end up loving his writing and want to read some more of it. Okay, the next six books that I have here are all, are all art copies, so they're advanced reader copies that I picked up um, from my job. I work at a bookstore as one of my jobs, and um, they have a lot of arcs just sitting around there um, for people to pick up. Um, customers and employees both are free to pick them up, um, give them a try, and so I found a couple that seemed really interesting to me. Um, one I have here is called Menagerie. This one is, is by Rachel Vincent. I don't know much about this one, but when I read the back, it talked a lot about um, circuses. And for some reason, I found that books with circuses just really intrigue me a lot. And I don't know why. I've actually never been to the circus. Never. Um, but yeah, books with circus themes and settings are really interesting to me. They seem very, like, mystical and, like intriguing. I don't know why, but this one really seemed like it was going to have that sort of feel to it, and I'm looking forward to it. The next book I have here is another art copy, and it is called A Tale of Highly Unusual Magic, and it is by Lisa Papa Dimitrio. I hope I said that right. It sounds actually kind of Greek. Um, this book intrigued me, first of all, because the cover is gorgeous and the title is just really intriguing, but when I read the back, it's about, um, it actually reminds me a little bit of Night Circus. It's about these two characters who are connected through this um, old copy of a book that they're able to um, contact each other through this book. So this one definitely intrigued me with that um, premise. I definitely love books that have sort of a magical realism aspect to them and this seems like it takes place in the modern world but has this little piece of magic to it and so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. This next book is called A Step Toward Falling by Cammie McGovern. Um, this one intrigued me again, but the cover was really interesting. This one is about a girl who um, ends up witnessing a crime happening to a disabled person and she doesn't do anything about it. And sort of her struggle with that and how it affects her. Um, I think she ends up meeting somebody else and they work at a, dis a center for uh, disabled individuals or differently abled individuals. Um, and I think that's a really interesting subject matter. As I've said with a lot of these books, this just um, this one has a really cool subject matter. I will hope that the author, um, you know, handles it well. It's informative, but also it's a story that we can relate to. Um, I've had good experiences with that sort of t subject matter in the past, and I'm really hoping that this will bring the same sort of thing to the table. So this one is called um, This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee. This one, it sounds really interesting. Um, it focuses around um, the time period when Frankenstein was written and sort of um, it takes on the idea that there is a real doctor and a real monster and um, that the story that was written is based off of true events and this is sort of the story of the true events. And um, if you have watched me for a while, you know that I love Frankenstein. I think it's a really great story. It's um, just so well written, so um, entertaining, but also just like really, I don't know, it like got at my heart 
a lot. So um, I'm really interested in seeing how this one, um, how this one compares to Frankenstein, but also just how it stands on its own as a story about um, a doctor and a monster. This one would have been really good to read in October had I not been totally slumpy and not reading anything. This next book is called The Expatriates. This one is by Janice Y.K. Lee. Um, this one intrigued me. Um, the cover, please, is stunning. It is so pretty. It's like a city skyline. You can see like a rooftop terrace here. And that drew me in, made me want to read the back of it. And it is about these multiple different characters, multiple different perspectives of people living in the city, dealing with sort of domestic um, issues. Um, I think one of them is trying to get pregnant. Another individual is going through a loss in her life. Another one is um, dealing with some sort of incident that happened recently. Um, so it's just a bunch of different people. I'm assuming their lives will, you know, go, come together in some sort of way. Um, dealing with things that people deal with. And I really like stories like that because they're very realistic. And I'm looking forward to this one. It's also quite short, so I think I can probably fly through it. It's an adult novel, um, but still, it's I think it's it'll be easy to get through. Yeah, looking forward to that. The last art copy that I have here is called The Hundred Year Flood by Matthew Celesis. Um, this one intrigued me. Uh, it's about a Korean American individual who is, um, I believe, fleeing to Prague after the suicide of his uncle and um, right after the events of 9-11. All this is happening around this time period where this flood that comes every hundred years is about to um, it's about to strike and um, so it's sort of, I think it's going to be a story that um, sort of connects this young man and his struggles and um, sort of the nature of this flood and how it affects the place where he is living at that time. I don't know much else about this story, um, but it definitely seems interesting and again it's quite short. I think it's something I can fly through. The last books that I have here I actually just purchased from the bookstore that I work at and I just couldn't help myself. One of the first books that I have here is Wild Awake. This is by Hilary T. Smith. Um, and this is supposed to be a book about um, mental illness. Um, I think it's actually anxiety. I think it either has to do with anxiety or depression. I'm not exactly positive, but this one has gotten a little bit of hype in the booktube community. I've seen a lot of people read it and really enjoy it. Um, I believe it takes place in Canada, which is kind of cool. I don't it's not a lot of stories that I read that take place um, in Canada, but this one just seems really interesting to me, and um, I think it's young adults, and I'm definitely interested in it. Next, I picked up The Queen of the Tearling, which a lot of people already know a lot about. Um, this is a, I think it's actually an adult fantasy series um, that has been getting a lot of um, talk around booktube. Um, it's supposed to be very politically based, um, which I think is intriguing. It's not really my favorite aspect of fantasy novels, but if it's done well, I really do enjoy it. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is by Erica Johansson. The sequel to this book has already come out. It's called The Invasion of the Tearling. It came out somewhat recently, um, and I don't know how many books this is going to be, but I think it's going to be a quite long series. So the premise seems kind of you know, typical of a fantasy novel. This girl arrives on her 19th birthday. She's gonna be the new queen of the tearling, but people don't want her to be the queen, and so conflict arises, and she goes on a journey. That is pretty typical fantasy, but also I love fantasy, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. This book I had never heard of, but everybody who works at the bookstore recommended it to me and they were like, how could you have never heard of this? So I'm wondering if you guys have heard of this book. It is called The Never Ending Story by Michael Endy. End. It is supposed to be a children's book, but it's like super long and it seems like really intricate. So I know nothing about this book except for that it is fantasy, it is a necessary read, and that I'll enjoy it. That is what I've been told. And, I mean, I have no reason to believe otherwise. The images on here are really interesting and make me think that there's going to be some very interesting creatures that appear in this book here. So, look at that guy right there. I don't know. This just seems really interesting to me and I'm surprised I've never heard of it. So, I picked this one up and I'm looking forward to it. The next book here is sort of along the same lines um, as that last one. 
but it's fairy tales. It's called Long Ago and Far Away. This one was just, it was on sale. It's incredibly short. It's like the shortest little fairy tale book I've ever heard. Um, it's supposed to be eight traditional fairy tales. Um, and I really like collecting fairy tales that are um, maybe lesser known or maybe from different cultures that I wouldn't have read otherwise. This one seems like it has all of those things in it and I'm looking forward to it. I think I might, um, if I'm reading a lot of contemporary or historical fiction, I might intersperse some of these stories in between it at a time where I'm sort of not reading a lot of fantasy or fairy tales. So this one will be good for that because it's short. Next, I grabbed Persuasion by Jane Austen. I have read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, um, and that is the only Jane Austen that I have read. Um, this one was on sale, and it's this really beautiful edition that has, I think it's a Penguin English Library edition. It has a really gorgeous design along the cover, um, and I haven't read this one yet, so I figured it's short. It's probably not going to be the easiest read because it is Jane Austen, and she has a lot of description and a lot of language that's older. Um, it's not hard to get through, but it's not quick and easy. I am looking forward to this one here because I do enjoy her writing quite a bit. And the final book in this book haul is one that I am so, so excited for. I've been looking forward to this book since I heard it was going to be written, and I just am so excited that it's here now. I can't even believe it. And that is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for this. I, the only reason that I have not, like, zoomed through this is because, like, I just like can't read right now. It just isn't happening. As soon as that has gotten better, I am going to jump right into this one. Um, if you don't know what this one is about, um, it is the fan fiction that is written in Fangirl. So Rainbow Rowell wrote a book called Fangirl, and in that the main character, Kath, writes fan fiction for this series of stories um, with the main character, Simon Snow. And Rainbow Rowell decided to write the a full version of the fan fiction that Kath writes in that book. Within Fangirl, there are actually snippets of um, the fan fiction that is ends up being carry on, um, but they they're not like completely cohesive to the story, and but they're very intriguing, and I just am so excited that we're gonna get like a full a full story of Simon Snow and what happens there. I just can't wait. Fangirl is like one of my favorite books. It's so good. It's um, really pertinent if you are going away to college especially or if you're going away to a new place and um, it's maybe difficult to adjust to that new place and you're geeky and you like to read and st maybe you're a little bit introverted like me. Um, I read that at a time period where that was like made so much sense to me um, that it was like incredibly relatable and also just like really a really well written book. I loved it and I know I'm gonna love this one. Okay guys that is it for my book haul for the months of September and October. I've collected quite a few books here. Hopefully I'll be feeling a lot more inclined to read them in the next couple months because it's really a bummer when you're in a reading slump. I'm sure everybody or most people have experienced that before and it does not feel good so I'm really hoping that I don't feel this way anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!